Hi, I'm Josh Lindsay. Today I will be demonstrating the anatomy and physiology of the human voice during singing. The larynx is the structure which houses the vocal cords and is composed of cartilage, ligaments, and tissue. The cricoid cartilage lies right here, and the thyroid cartilage is situated on top of the cricoid cartilage. The hyoid bone, technically not part of the larynx, is positioned immediately above the thyroid cartilage right here. The notch on the thyroid cartilage is commonly referred to as the Adam's apple. And the vocal cords are situated directly behind the Adam's apple. The cricoid cartilage and the thyroid cartilage are connected by the cricothyroid muscle, which when contracted, lowers and tilts the thyroid cartilage forward, stretching and thinning the vocal cords. Voice teachers often tell their students to lower their larynx, which is essentially contracting the cricothyroid muscle to lower the thyroid cartilage. Next, we will examine the posterior view of the larynx. The posterior cricorytenoid muscles located in this region contract to abduct the vocal cords, spreading them apart. The transverse and oblique arytenoid muscles are responsible for adducting or bringing the vocal cords together. Next, we will present a top-down view of the vocal cords. The vocal cords are inserted behind the Adam's apple and extend all the way back to the arytenoid cartilages. The vocal cords are composed of ligaments, layers of tissue, and muscle. The ligament is located right here, followed by layers of tissue, and then the thyroarytenoid muscle. These muscles right here are the lateral cricoarytenoid muscles, which when contracted, pivot the arytenoid cartilages, stretching the vocal cords slightly in this direction while simultaneously adducting them. There are three primary mechanisms by which the vocal cords adduct or come together to produce a sound. I previously discussed two of these mechanisms. One, the contraction of the lateral and oblique arytenoid muscles, and two, the subsequent contraction of the lateral cricoarytenoid muscles. The third mechanism involves the Bernoulli effect. The Bernoulli effect occurs when air passes through two objects, creating a vacuum and sucking those two objects together. I will demonstrate with two pieces of paper. The air passing between the two pieces of paper created a vacuum, sucking the two pieces of paper together. Back pressure was generated, causing the air to push the papers apart. This process was repeated over and over again, resulting in a fluttering effect. This same process occurs with the vocal cords. When air passes through the aperture of the vocal cords, it creates a vacuum and draws the vocal cords together. Once they are in contact, back pressure is generated, causing the vocal cords to separate. This cycle repeats hundreds of times per second. When the vocal cords touch, they vibrate, producing a sound. Notably, the frequency of oscillation corresponds to the pitch. For example, the vocal cords oscillate 440 times per second when producing an A440 or an A4 on the piano. I will now discuss which muscles are used when singing low and high notes in classical singing. When singing low notes, the thyroarytenoid muscles dominate. When these muscles contract, the vocal cords shorten, resulting in a lower pitch. The transverse and oblique arytenoid muscles also contract 
to adduct the vocal cords. Conversely, when singing middle and upper register notes, the cricothyroid muscles dominate. When these muscles contract, the thyroid cartilage tilts forward, elongating and thinning the vocal cords, and thus raising the pitch. Just like when singing low notes, the transverse and oblique arytenoid muscles adduct when singing high notes. Thanks for watching my video. Comment below if you have any questions about how the voice functions in singing. Smash that like button and subscribe to the channel and we'll see you in the next video.